Hey, John here. Let's have a look, see at what happens when we got an array like this. I've got a array with three elements in it, whose type is int, right? I got three integers in this array. It's a local variable in this function main. It's going to go on main, the call stack for main, uh, right? The activation record. I initialize it to these three values. I have another integer variable whose initial value is two. I'm going to print out the size of this array. I'm going to print out whatever this is, okay? Now, it turns out you're going to see in a moment that if you refer to an array, by giving its name without putting square brackets after it, what you're really referring to is the address where the values are located. Just giving the uh, name of the array is the same thing as asking for the address of the first element, okay? Then what am I going to do? I'm going to print out the XYZ variable. It's going to be 2. I'm going to call this function here. Then I'm going to print out XYZ again, and then I'm going to hex dump out the contents of the array. All right, and this time I'm going to give the address of the first element of the array. Is uh, That's where I'm going to tell them to start dumping out, okay? Now notice here, we, we, you may not realize this. We've already been using pointers, all right, if you're new to this. When you pass an array to a subroutine like this, you're not passing the value of these or this array. You're not making a copy of this and sending that copy down. This is actually, and we're going to see this in a moment, that technically you're, you're sending down the address where these contents are located. Okay, And that's in stark contrast to this over here. This is not an array. When I pass XYZ down to func A, I'm passing the value of this variable. All right, now this is kind of tricky, and you got to keep all this track in mind. This really the only weird thing here is uh, the arrays versus the non arrays. All right, when this happens uh, the way I'm showing you now. Later on, we'll see that this also kind of happens with references, but in a different way. Anyhow, if you define the uh, function like this, and we have the array defined like this, we've seen this before, and then of course your integer variable that you pad the XYZ value, right, that comes in here, I'm gonna call that I in the context of this function. So in the activation record, we're gonna find out that the size of A is gonna turn out to be, that's gonna be the size of a pointer. It's not going to be the size of this A array, right? This has three elements. That has three integers on this particular machine. This will be, what, 12 bytes when we print out the size of array down here in main. This is going to say 8 because it's going to be a pointer. Now, the compiler is going to generate a warning here, and I told the compiler to ignore that warning, but you'll see it go by because this is kind of a strange thing to ask for, all right? It will generate a warning. Anyway, we're going to say, what, what happens if I print out A in this context up here? All right? Now, remember, array down here, will be printed and you will see this in a minute it'll it'll print out the address of where that array is that's going to say it'll be doing the same thing in here okay but in this case this is another way of defining a pointer variable as a parameter we're going to see more about this as we go if you say ampersand a in here you're asking for the address where the pointer to the array is stored and we just like we saw in part one of this uh series okay now what happens we're going to say here's some values of the elements in this array i'm going to change the value of a sub one the first you know element number one and if you haven't seen this uh, inside a c program before you can put a zero x followed by some digits in here and, and this is a way to assign a value expressed in hexadecimal all right so, and I do this on purpose so that we can know what to look for when we see the dump printed out of the array later on, because this will be printed out in hex and we'll recognize it. Otherwise, it'll be converted between decimal and it'll be harder to figure out. Uh, after I've made that assignment, we'll print it out again down here. And of course, when I print out A1 like this, it will print it in decimal. So even though I set it to this, it'll come out uh, to some weird value. In hex, that number is on the order of, uh, I don't know, one and a quarter billion 
uh, in decimal, okay? Um, what happens down here? We're going to print out the value of i that was passed in, right? That's this xyz variable here. Then I'm going to modify it, and I'm going to print it out again. Obviously, at this time, it'll print out 1, 2, 3, 4, right? But this will prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that after funk a returns, xyz will not have been modified, okay? And this down here will show you that array was modified. So what's the takeaway here? When you pass something to a function in the form of a pointer, like we are here, which we're going to see in a moment, this function can use that pointer to find out where that thing is, and it can modify it. And that's what I'm going to do right here. If you pass it by value, like this, then you've made a copy of whatever that thing is, and Funk A has its own copy. And even if Funk A modifies it like this, it will not be modifying the one down here. Okay? So let's compile this and make it go. Let's see what's going on. There's the warning I told you about. It says, oh, by the way, if you put a size of on an array that's a function parameter, then the size of will return the size of an int pointer rather than the size of the array it points to. Okay? And of course, the compiler could never know the size of the thing it points at anyway. Right? Because we didn't give it a number in there in the, in the square brackets. Right? Because there's no number here. And even if we put a number in there, I happen to know that the number here does not have to match the number there. Arrays are kind of screwy in this regard. When you have an array that's a parameter, the, the, the numbers in here uh, can, can actually mismatch the, va the numbers of the actual array. Okay, And that can get you into all sorts of trouble, by the way. Just be careful with that. Okay, so it compiled. It gave us a warning. I said, don't worry about the warning. Let's go ahead and run it. And see what happens. So, size of the array is 12, right? It has three integers in it, so that's 12. It's located at this address. Perfect. XYZ is a value 2, right? I initialized it to 2. What's the size of A? Well, this size of A came from that function. This is in the subroutine. Remember, we printed out this, we printed out the XYZ, and then we called func underscore A, and we passed it the array, and we passed it XYZ, right? So this size of A is the 8. That's what the compiler warned us about up here, okay? Then we say, what is the value of A itself, right? What's the value of the, of the pointer? This is pointing at the contents of the array, all right? It matches that. What is ampersand A? Well, ampersand A, remember, just like that ampersand P in, in part one of this, uh, would be the address where the pointer is uh, stored. Where's the value of this address? Where is the variable A? Where's the memory allocated? It holds that the value of A in this context, right? So that'll end up being on the call stack somewhere. Turns out it's at this address right here. Okay, so in func underscore A, we print out the first two uh, elements of A. Then remember, I changed it to, uh, you know, hex 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or whatever that. I guess I was off a few billion <laughs> by about half. So that's a pretty big number, all right? That's probably the hex, uh, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, then what happens is, remember, I printed out the I value. Then I assigned it one, two, three, four, and I printed it out again, right? Then we return from this subroutine back to main, and we print out XYZ again, and it's still two, even though the func A modified its copy when it was running, okay? And then, of course, we hex dumped out the array, and here's the element number zero, and you can see in little Indian order oh, 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 001 and remember we initialized it to something like 163 or something so here's the 1 and you can see the 3 down here for the third element and you can see the little end in 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 that i assigned the uh, second element of the array a sub 1 
in this function up here, all right? So what's the takeaway? If you pass something like this, you're really creating a pointer called A that is uh, pointing at an, uh, uh, the elements of an integer array, okay? And that is a pointer like any other pointer, and it has a value, and it has an address where itself is stored. All right, so let's look at another way to do this, right? Except this is just a pointer anyway. How come I can't just do that, right? A pointer is the name of a variable after a star, an asterisk, right? We, we read these backwards. A is a pointer to an integer. All pointers can be accessed the same way arrays are used if we want to, okay? Turns out this will be the exact same thing. But the compiler probably won't argue about this anymore. Okay? Because it knows that we know that that really is a pointer, even though it might have looked like an array. So that warning was just for, for beginners, I suppose, right? So here we go. We run it again. What happens? It's going to do the exact same thing. It tells us the size of the array is 12. The array address happens to be here in this run. XYZ is 2. Size of our pointer is 8. Same thing as it was last time when we used the array notation to define the uh, argument. It has a value that's currently pointing at where the array is located. It has as a value, we say, the address of the array, right? The address of the pointer itself is here, okay? And we play the same games. We have a 0 and a 6. We set it to hex 1 to the 5, 6, 7, 8. We print it back out again. We play the games with the uh, local i variable and print out x, y, z after we return. And down here, when we're all done with everything, we still see the array has a 1. We have the 1 to the 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and the 3 just like before. So the takeaway here is... That if you declare something with square a pair of empty square brackets after it, it's the same thing as saying I have a pointer to an integer. All right, so let's look at this little program here. Uh, what do we got here? We've got our array, same values as before. We got an X, Y, Z that's an integer that's two, just like before. We print the address of where the first element starts in the array. We say that's the address of the zero with element array number zero i should say index number zero right the address of xyz is expressed like this you say ampersand and then you give it a variable name and then you're asking for the address of that uh variables contents okay uh we'll skip a line we gotta define a variable that's a pointer to a variable called p that's a pointer to an int or you read these right to left right and then what are we going to do? We're going to set p equals array. Array looks like an address, and it's the, it represents the address of an integer. Therefore, the C++ language will allow us to assign the value of the integer that's sitting in array at its first element. Assign the address of that first element, I should say, to the pointer variable. So a pointer now, we say points to the first element of this uh, array, the variable called array. I can now print it out. I can say P, all right, and it'll be the array. It'll be the address of the array, okay? Now star P, if you do this, we say we, we dereference, right? We're dereferencing the pointer named P, okay? All right, so P star P is we're dereferencing the pointer. This is, represents the value that P points to, right? And later on, if we want to, we can say P equals, again, ampersand X, Y, Z. That's how we ask for the address of the value of X, Y, Z. And X, Y, Z is an int, therefore... P is a pointer to an int, therefore I can assign it the address of the contents where XYZ is stored, okay? And if I want to, I can print out that one, just like I did before, and I can also print out star P. I can dereference the P again. So what I really did here is I aimed P, I pointed P at A sub 0 up here. By doing this, 
Then I changed it to point somewhere else. Now it's pointing at the context of, uh, of, of the XYZ variable. And I'm going to print out the contents of XYZ like this. If I want to, I can say, give me the address of the second element of or, or array sub two, rather, right? That's the third element, right? Index number two. And again, I can say, what's P? And you will see that the address of that third element will print, and then we can dereference P and print out the value of that third element. And then I'll dump out the whole array in hex so we can see all the values and all the addresses all together in one uh, fell swoop there. So let's go ahead and compile this and run it. So what happens here? Here is my address of the array, which is sitting on the call stack by by the way, right? It's a local variable. Then uh, this is the address of where the contents of XYZ are stored. If you look closely in here, you can see F, 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 you know, it's four, six, F, five, two, three, one, C. And then you see the same thing, blah, 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 four, six, F, five, two, three, two, C. You can see these things are basically right next to each other, okay? by the way. All right. Uh, then what happens is, so we said P equals the array, and then I put all this out in the print so we can follow along which is which here, right? So we assign P equals to array, and then I uh, printed out the value of P. And we can clearly see that this address is, in fact, the address of the array, right? The first element of the array. And if I print out star P, I get the value 1. Well, that was the first the value of a array sub zero, right? And you can actually see it in the dump right here. Here's array sub zero. Remember, we printed out the contents of the array. So what happens if I say P equals ampersand X, Y, Z, and then print out P? I get this value right here. Well, this is the address where the value of X, Y, Z is stored. And if I dereference the pointer, I get the value of X, Y, Z. Remember, we set it to two when we initialized it. Then later on, I said P equals the address of the array sub 2. And I get this number here. Notice this number is not equal to this number here plus 2. It's this number plus 8 in hex. All right? Because each element of the array is 4 bytes. So the address of the uh, element index number 2 is eight bytes ahead of where we started up here. So here's the beginning of the array. Okay, so plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight gives us the address of the third element of the array, which is called array sub two, index number two, right? And this number here, Ending in two three three four, you can see this ends in two three. This is two three three zero one two three and four. All right, so that's how you read all this stuff, and this should all make sense at this point, right? If I point P at something, and then I ask, can I have the value that P points to, and that's when you put the star in front of it like this, you're gonna get the value of whatever it pointed at. So I pointed at X, Y, Z, print that out. That's the same thing as printing out X, Y, Z at this point, right? And so on. All right, let's edit our program, all right? Same beginning up there. I just removed some of the extra printing down here, all right? Let's change what's going on down here. Once I assign P to point at array and I can dereference P and I can get the value that P points to, and since P points to an integer, the value is printed as an integer, right? Let's do something else. Let's take P equals P plus one, right? And that, as we know, is the same thing as saying plus plus P or P plus plus, right? So what happens if I add one to P and then go through this whole thing again, right? So what am I going to do here? I'm going to change my little comment, and I'm going to say that, okay? Now what's going to happen, all right? We're going to see that adding 1 to P
invokes something called pointer arithmetic. All right. And what that means is point to the next element. All right. If I add one to P, I'm really going to add four. Okay. When P points to array, it points at array sub zero. If I do this, I just moved it to point over to array sub one. Okay. Equals array sub one, like that. If I then print it out down here, we'll see that we get the next element. So it'll print out a one, then it'll print a six. While we're at it, let's go ahead and go, let's go full uh, hog here. Now it will point out, print out that three. Now, just for fun, what happens if we do this again? All right, this is where you get into trouble. Now what? Yeah, it's going to print whatever's in memory there is you're going to find out happens, okay? Now, let's find out what is in memory there by changing this, okay? Let's print out some more bytes, okay? Now, you can't always do this. If there is no memory there, this will end up giving you an error, okay? But there probably is, all right? I'm going to gamble, right? So what we've done is we started printing out Array zero here, we added one. Then we'll print out array element number one. We point to the next one. There's array element number two. This would be array element number three if one exists. But who knows what's there? It's going to print garbage is what it's going to do. All right? We're pointing at literally nothing. So who knows what's going to go on here? Okay, what happens? So we get some giant weird number coming out, right? And of course, there's no error. Piler doesn't tell you anything bad happened because it doesn't know. This is your responsibility. If you point P somewhere that it ain't supposed to be pointing, you can have problems. All right, that's the that is the takeaway there. So what do we got here? Array equals uh, you know a two six or two eight six C. All right. Then we point P at it. We end up P points to the same address, and we dereference P. We get the one. We add 1 to P, you can see that 6C plus 4 turns out equals 7, 0, okay? And you can see that here. 2, 6, 0, this is your C, D, E, F, right? So when, when the pointer is pointing to here and the compiler knows, and this is key, the compiler knows he's pointing at an integer, and it knows that, an in, that size of int is 4. By adding 1 to a pointer to an int, it really adds 4 to it, so it moves over to here. Okay, that's why it, it it advanced it to 70 there, okay? Then we print out the value, and the value is 6. Clearly, we can see that that's the value here. Now we say uh, add another one, and we can see it moved from 70 to 74, which is this guy right there. Print it out, value is 3. Now we added it, and we're off the end of the array. Uh, I don't know what that is. It just happens to be in memory. This is anything could happen, right? You pointed it someplace illegal, all right? I'm going to say illegal. Compiler doesn't help you. The runtime did not help you. It can. If you point it really crazy, eventually you'll get into some problem that could cause your program to crash or something. So let's say we add, say, plus 1,000 or, you know, 10,000, okay? I don't know. Eventually, we'll end up in a situation, well, it would be nice if I actually, <laughs> if we really added to it, all right, that'll add uh, a 1,000. It'll increment it by 40,000, okay? Why? Because it's we're doing pointer arithmetic in there. So let's run it again. This is what happens when you're pointing at non-existent memory. I moved the pointer so far away that there's no memory there. The address went way up so high. Remember, this is pointing in the stack and very high up in the stack at that. So I moved, I ran off the end of the memory of the machine is what happened or out of my address space technically, okay? So don't do this. Don't, don't point where they're not supposed to be pointing, okay? This is why programs fail. This is where virus, this is the number one reason viruses get into programs. 
People have uh, pointers that point to places they're not supposed to be and accidentally modifying the memory in those locations. I'm just printing out these values. If you assign a value to this thing, you're destroying something that who knows what it is, right? You're modifying variables of some other part of your own program. And that thing, at, at random, ad hoc, right? That will cause the program to crash. This is really bad, okay? You don't want to ever do this. You need to keep track of where your pointers are pointing and make sure they're never pointing in an incorrect location at all times, okay? Notice what happens here. What, what's this pointer pointing to on that line of code right there? I just declared it. I defined it, rather. But I never gave it a value. I did down here. I did right away later. What is the value here? I don't know. The value there literally will be, well, space is allocated but it's never initialized to anything. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just print out the value of P here. I'm going to say, I don't know. It's got garbage in it. Okay? I suspect the program could die trying to print this line out. I don't know. Let's find out. Uh, well, the compiler at least did me a nice favor and said, oh, by the way, <laughs> you may not be uh, using a variable that has been initialized. And that's why we put this in here, by the way. If you don't tell it to warn you against all possible foolishness, it won't generate warnings like this, which makes it very difficult to debug your programs. That's why I always turn this thing on. Usually I put W error in here as well. But if I do that, it would not continue on and give me a program that I can run. So let's go ahead and run this. With an un uninitialized pointer, you're certain to have a program die. Okay, it died right here. Segfault core dump. What a segfault is... Uh, it, it means that uh, your program tried to access a memory location that is illegal and doesn't have a value. Okay? That's literally what a segmentation fault is. You can go ahead and take a low-level operating systems course, and you'll learn about how the thing figures all that fun stuff out. Okay? So what's the takeaway here? Never uh, create pointers that are uninitialized. Okay? If you do have a pointer and there's no useful value to give it, Assign it this, points to nothing. Null PTR is just a fancy way of assigning it the value zero, by the way. Null PTR is zero. And as we print this out, you'll see that it is, in fact, zero. Now, this will still die right here, okay? Because you can't dereference a zero pointer all right it's still illegal so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just put the end of the line right here and comment out the bad code so that our program runs it'll die later because i still have that other problem in there you'll notice the compiler warning went away it is now initialized right so it's not going to say oh you didn't set it to something uh and as you can see up here p is set to zero all right oops Null PTR is zero. P points at the number zero. Down here, you uh, see it pointing out the array and so on, and it eventually dies down here. At some point, this garbage it changed its value again. Now it's some big negative number, right? So if you, yeah, if you point somewhere you're not supposed to be, bad things can happen. All right, let's go ahead and dereference the null pointer and see this thing generate another error, but at least this error is more controlled we know it should give you a real error when you dereference that null pointer, okay? And that's what happened. Now, let's go ahead and run this with GDB, just for fun. Uh, where's my, uh, this thing, if I just say run, and it dies, this is how you figure out how to debug your seg fault problems. I don't know where it is. I can't figure it out. I don't know. I wrote this massive program, and I don't understand what I'm doing. Well, you run it in here. When it dies, it says, oh, by the way, I died while I was executing in your main function on line 21 while I was trying to do this. <laughs> well, 
That sure is nice, <laughs> isn't it? Now, it doesn't necessarily tell you exactly what address died on or anything else, but you can say print P, and it'll tell you, oh, P currently is a pointer to an int. Its current value is zero. All right, so you now know dereferencing zero is illegal, and it will cause you a sag fault, and that's why this program dies. So you come back in here and you say, oh, good, I can now fix my program. Because now I know, what was it, line 12 or something like that? Or 21? I don't, we know dang well it was this line right here, right? Let's go ahead and comment it out. Oh, the program died. Oh, I got an idea. Don't run that code anymore. Now what will happen is it will run down and die down here. So let's see what happens. We'll run it with GDB again. We know it's going to die, so let's just run it again. With GDB, run. Oh, no, it croaked. Now it croaked on line 36, okay? And it was trying to do this. So I can, again, print P. And there it is, some weird value. That's, like, not even... That's, that's a little bit higher than this, right? And that kind of makes sense. Remember, this died because I added, like, uh, 10,000 or 40,000 or something like that to it, right? So if it's currently pointing, you know, 7, really high 7-something, and I may move it forward to some bigger value by some thousands of numbers, it should end up 8-something, something, something, right? And you could actually calculate this out exactly if you wanted to do this all in hex, which I don't want to do. I can't do that in my head. Uh... But yeah, that's probably what you're going to find out. This, yeah, blah, 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 7B18 is probably 10,000 times 4 in hex, converted to hex, more than this address right here. All right, let's get rid of our examples on how to write bad code and go back to looking at how to write good code. All right, so let's see what's going on here. Remember, we pointed at array, and then we print out the first element, the second element, and the third element like this. That's all great, but what else can you do with these things? Well, I can also say star p equals, you know, uh, hex, let's see, uh, you know, whatever, 775522, right? And we can then print it out again, which will be some weird value in, in decimal, right? Why don't I go ahead and do this? Like so, so we know what we're looking at. Uh, whatever, and this is just p, whatever. All right, so what we'll do is we'll print out the P again. It'll be the same value it was up here because we didn't change the pointer. We changed the thing it's pointing at. We dereferenced P, okay? So we say take the integer that P points to and set that integer to this value. So now when we hex dump out our array, we'll see the last element in the array will have been changed from uh, whatever it is, 3 up here, right? When we see it in hex, we'll recognize it. It'll be 0077552. We won't recognize it here, right? Because it'll be in decimal. But that's okay. Right? So that must be whatever this is in decimal, right? Right? We said star P equals hex... 77552. And that's the third element of the array. There's the first, the second, third. That's how you modify things that the pointers point at. All right, now we know essentially what pointers do. They point at things, and you can move them around. Let's look at what it means to move them around here. Okay, so I got this array. It's got three elements. I got a pointer. I'm going to point it at the first element in this array. What am I going to do? I'm going to count in 0, 1, and 2, and I'm going to print it out. We can intermix these things. And when you have a pointer, you can use array notation to access the elements of an array that P might be pointing at. All right, so this will print out the first element, the second element, and the third element of the array that P points at. All right, just make sure it points at an array that has at least three elements in it if you're going to do this. Right now, what happens when we're doing math? All right. If you do this, due to the operator precedence rules, this is the same as this, okay? Well, we're dereferencing P, so what is that going to do? Well, P at this point 
points to the first element of array. It points at this one right here. So this thing in parentheses represents the value one when you dereference that P. We're not changing P anywhere in this loop. So what we're doing is we're printing out one plus zero the first time through this loop. Then we're gonna print out one plus one the second time through this loop, and one plus two the third time through this loop. Okay, that's what's gonna happen if we do this, all right? Same thing as what I just deleted those parentheses. All right, so you gotta keep the operator presence in mind when you do this. If you want, you can use this notation and add I to P before you dereference it. Okay, pointer arithmetic here. Every time I add one to P, I'm moving P to the next element. I'm adding the size of the data type it points at, right? So if I say P plus zero, the first time through this loop, it's still pointing at the first element. P plus one, the second time through this loop, it's pointing at the six. P plus two, it's pointing at the three. And because this thingy in parentheses represents the value of a pointer, and yes, this is called pointer arithmetic, you can do that with a pointer. You put a star in front of that to dereference the sum of P plus I, and it'll print out just like I said, okay? Now what's going on down here? We can also advance the pointer in our loop, print it out, add one to P, we already saw that, right? What happens down here is another thing you can do. You can use the post increment operator like this. Again, you gotta be careful about the operator precedence. This will work because double plus a, uh, you know, the, the, the post fix operator like this does have a much higher precedence than the plus does up, he, up in the scenario up here, right? So what happens is the pointer value will be dereferenced and the plus plus will apply to the pointer, not to the thing that's dereferenced, okay? In other words, this is not the same thing as this. In fact, this may not even be legal, okay? Actually, no, it is. This will actually change the value of the array elements. We'll do that in a minute. Let's go ahead and run this. Yeah, like I said, I've been doing this for, for decades, and it, sometimes it gets confusing. Just don't try and do too much at once is my point. Notice every one of these points out, one, six, three, those are the elements in order, uh, except for this one here, which was the scenario when you were adding uh, uh, zero, one, and two to the element, right? So the second time through here was this weird case here when we were unknowingly perhaps executing this logic like this. Let me go ahead and recompile it. We'll rerun that. And we'll see, yes, this is the same as this, right? And the other case where the parentheses are not around the star P, but instead over here does what you would expect it to do. It adds the, it adjusts the pointer before it dereferences it, okay? This case here, it moved one at a time and printed them out in order. This kind of makes sense. This also moved it over one at a time, and this expression represents the value that P is pointing at before you add one to it. All right, so now let's change the bottom of the code to do this, right? What happens if we put parentheses in here, right? This, I'm going to delete this comment because it no longer replies. What is this code going to do? This is nice and confusing, right? What the heck? Well, star P is the value in the array that P points at. That's the value that will be printed to C out. And after it's printed, it will be incremented by one. So this is kind of like stealthily modifying a value in the array. P points to the array. We never modify P. We execute this loop three times. It prints the value of the first element of the array and then adds one to that element. Go around the loop a second time. So when we print out the contents down here, after we've executed the loop up here, 
we'll see what's going on. All right, the first element turned it in, into a four because we incremented it three times through that loop, right? Wow, that's confusing, right? So keep your operator precedence rules in mind. If you're gonna mix two thing, too many things all at once, I'm dereferencing P, I'm incrementing the pointer as it is right now. If I put those parentheses back in, I'm dereferencing P and then I'm incrementing the value that that was you know in the array if i put a plus plus in front of it over here it'll increment it before it prints it if i put the plus plus back there it increments it after it prints it okay so if you can't do all this in your head you can't follow this along i mean you don't have to be you know some obnoxious person to brag about the fact that you know every operator precedence rule do it down here, right? If you have coworkers, eventually, and if you even start up your own business, if you have a startup and you write code that mixes too much stuff on one line, and then you hire a bunch of programmers, they may get confused and create problems in your own code. You know, don't be a show off. Keep everything simple, okay? That's the takeaway here. You're going to have to expect to see some stuff, though, uh, that mixes a few of these. These aren't too bad, but you can get thrown. All right, so when you're getting going with pointers, don't get too cute with all this stuff. If you really want to do these things, you can write a couple of separate uh, lines of code. Then anybody would understand them, all right? So don't confuse yourself and your future coworkers or your future employees. Yikes, right? You don't want to have your own stuff all get broken, okay? Thanks for watching. See you next time.